The fact that the reason people first started going to Las Vegas was for all of the water is a weird science-y fact that boggles my mind. By the time you watch this, I will be reenacting The Hangover on my bachelor party in Las Vegas. And in light of that, I wanted to do a Las Vegas-themed science video, and what I learned is that Las Vegas used to look like this. And not even tens of thousands of years ago, not even hundreds of years ago. Well, I mean, it did tens of thousands of years ago and hundreds of years ago. But within a century or so, Vegas was a true awakening. For tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years, Las Vegas was a lush green landscape home to giant mammals like giant sloths and saber-toothed tigers and dire wolves. And it's been a place different groups of people have called home for at least 5,000 years. But if you've ever been to Vegas, you're going to be like, whoa. Hold up a minute. It's 110 degrees in a dead-ass desert without a quickly drying up man-made lake and air conditioning, Las Vegas would be uninhabitable. So how did a bunch of people and animals inhabit the uninhabitable for hundreds or thousands of years before a big dam and some big damn air conditioners were even invented? Well, Sin City used to be sopping. In fact, a Spanish expedition in 1829 is what gave Las Vegas the name we have for it today. Las Vegas literally means the meadows. And the name wasn't ironic. It was a lush grassland that was fed by an abundance of natural springs. See, Vegas is in a valley, so all of the rainwater and snow and precipitation funnels down from the mountains to where Vegas is today. And then its porous, loose ground in the basin would allow all of that precipitation and water to soak through the bedrock into aquifers. The springs fed by these aquifers allowed for a lush, complex ecosystem surrounding the modern-day strip. And this became a vital stop for trade routes heading west because it was one of the only places out there that had water. The water allowed Mormon missionaries to set up the first settlement there. Eventually, the railroad came through. And then in 1907, just four years before Las Vegas was incorporated as an official city with 800 residents, the very first well in the area was dug. By 1912, more than a hundred wells had been drilled, most left uncapped and just flowing endlessly into the landscape. By 1930, 5,000 people lived in Las Vegas and thousands more were moving there in droves every year to start work on the Hoover Dam and to seek economic relief from the Great Depression. By 1950, it was 40,000 people. And by 1962, the well ran dry and all the green died. So for tens of thousands of years, the Vegas Strip we can only picture existing in a dead desert was really a lush green oasis. And it took just 50 short years in the lifetime of people who are still alive today to take it from a wet wonderland to a wasteland. And at the current rate of water consumption out west, Lake Mead will be dry in the next 10 to 15 years, making it completely uninhabitable even for people. But remember, people can't affect the weather or the environment. We don't need any regulations or restrictions or conservation. Nothing to see here, folks. Just pay no mind to the fact that Vegas was Verde, coincidentally at the exact same time we moved in. And now it isn't. And the fact that Las Vegas' long-lasting, lush landscape lending itself to legions of life was lost in less than a lifetime has left us with little levity. Well, sadly, that is pretty mind-boggling.